Hello viewers, good morning and a happy Monday to all. I'm Ron Grant and you're watching 284 Media. We are live and direct out of the British Virgin Islands where of course BVI love reigns supreme. With tourism industries all around us taking a significant hit during the global pandemic that is COVID-19, these times call for ingenuity and creativity in order to preserve and sustain tourism industries. Recently, the government of the Virgin Islands announced the reopening of the BVI borders to visitors on December 1st. With that in mind, stakeholders are engaging in planning and preparation in an attempt to provide the best service possible. Now to this end, on Friday, October 9th, 2020, the H. Lavery Stout Community College, along with the Government of the Virgin Islands and the BVI Tourist Board, launched the Tourism Certification Program. The main beneficiaries of this program will be professionals working in the hospitality industry in various disciplines, seeking to be, of course, certified in order to better serve. Joining us this morning to discuss the importance of hospitality training in these very crucial times, the new program, as well as how persons can register, is directly Director of the Culinary Arts and Hospitality Studies Department at HLSCC, Mrs. Keisha Davis Barnes. We're talking all things hospitality this morning. Um, it's time for you to uh, share some BVI love. Stick with us after a word from our sponsors. You're watching 284 Media. The wind! Oh! What is the hell? I'm freaking out! I'm Music. Coming to you live and direct from the beautiful British Virgin Islands. What's poppin', what's really good, what's happening, what's happening, what's up? Viewers, welcome back. For those of you just joining us, this is Tweet for Media. Mrs. Davis Barnes, a great morning to you, and welcome back to our studios. Thank you for taking this time out. Good morning, Ron. How are you? I'm doing very well. And yourself? I am great, thank you. Awesome. You have been in the business of hospitality training for a number of years now. Uh, before we get into the certification program, which uh, is the base of our conversation, can you begin by telling us, just from your seat, as a hospitality trainer and director, of course, of the Culinary Arts and Hospitality Studies, how important is the training of hospitality professionals in the BVI? I think that it is the backbone of our success within the industry, you know. Training and development in any area is important, Ron. And I think that, you know, once we be able to provide a platform for training and development, one that is measurable and one that has accountability connected to it, um, I feel that, you know, our service excellence levels can go up once we become a bit more serious about it and once organizations understand the importance of it, Ron. Okay. As mentioned earlier on Friday, October 9th, yourself along with your colleagues at HLSCC, the Government of the Virgin Islands and the BVI Tourist Board launched the Tourism Certification Program. Tell us about this program. Okay, so the certification program that we are having hosted at HLSCC, it has been 10 years in the working. Wow. Yes, so this is something that we have been working on for a very long time um, back in I think it was 2021, 2001, 2002, I became a certified hospitality trainer with the American Hotel Lodging Educational Institute. And that is where the birth for um, training and development within me came about. I learned all of the different techniques and I was like, you know, I think that this is something that we should be able to create a platform for persons in the tourism industry to be able to have an opportunity to, to, to be trained on industry standards so that they could can brush up their skills so that, like I said before, we can up our service um, excellence in the country. Um, a lot of times people go out, Ron, and they will say, oh, customer service is suck in our country and we need to do something about it. And yeah. I think that the idea for me was like, uh, at the college, we need to be the, the persons that's driving that conversation when it comes to the training and development component, because if we don't do it, no one else is going to do it for us. And I think that, you know, it is important for us to be able to incorporate all of the stakeholders, the government, the BVI Tourist Board, the college. Um, we're going to be, you know, getting out to all of the islands so that we will ensure that we leave no stones left unturned. But training and development is very important. And it, it is funny, you know, Ron. 
one because tourism has been one of our main economical yes, pillars for a long time and it has never been the conversation hmm. and I, I was a bit taken back as to why that is, and I think that we as professionals in the industry, we don't um, like kind of go out and make it a big deal and ensure that persons understand how important tourism is to our yes. um, economic development in this country. Um, we hear a lot about financial services, and I, you know it's all good and well, but at the end of the day, I tell my students that Hospitality isn't going anywhere. People have to, they love to travel, they want to come and visit us, they want to eat, they want to sleep. So this industry is here to stay. We are facing the COVID-19 pandemic right now, Ron, and out of every bad thing, I tend to look at the, the good in it. And I think that this, this pandemic has caused us to stop and think and realign, you know, where we are in the Virgin Islands as an industry and, and what we want to be able to see in our BVI love, that authenticity. And it is important for persons to be trained within their areas so that they can know how to produce at industry um, levels. Amazing, and you're absolutely right. It's amazing to see, though, that this idea, uh, it was mentioned, just did not come about. Uh, as you mentioned, it was in the works for about 10, 10 years, years, and I'm so happy uh, to see yourself and your colleagues uh, finally get this off the, the ground. Uh, as we, we discuss the program, uh, when exactly does the pro program begin, and how long will it be lasting for? Okay, so the program begins on October 20th, and... It it's funny that you ask how long it's going to last for. At HLSCC, we are on a mission to ensure that HLSCC becomes a training institute in the Virgin Islands and around the world in our know, Caribbean region. So it is ongoing. Okay. It's not going to stop. Uh, we're starting firstly with our line level employees because they're the part, the, the set of employees that will be able to, you know, be in, in contact with guests as they come back. So it's important for them to brush up on their skills. We're going to have the COVID-19 precaution measures in place for employees to understand how to operate in the new normal, how to keep themselves safe. Because like our premier said, the life that we save could very well be our own, our spouse, you know, our children and people around the community. So it's important for us to be able to know what the precautions measures are that we have to take. Also know how to conduct our jobs on an industry level. Okay. I want to be able to reiterate, Ron, that that this certification training is not ever going to be a one-off. It is going to be continuous because I would love persons that have businesses in the hospitality um, area to understand that training and development within your organization is one of the most crucial components to the success of any person working in our industry. You know, so I would like to ask persons that as you welcome as you welcome back your employees into your establishments stop and think about an orientation plan that involves the, the cabinets when they become approved the standards and the procedures that's needed to keep us safe put those things in your orientation plan talk to your employees your hr department needs to talk to your employees to to build a career platform and a career portfolio for them because we have one of the highest turnover rates um, in this industry worldwide. And it is it is because a lot of times people think that they can just come in and be a server, but there is a skill attached to being a server. There's a skill attached to being a bartender. So I think that the skill and the development of people, if we change the conversation um, as a country when it comes to training and development, and not only in tourism, in anything that we do, to let people know how important it is to always stay on top of your game. Um, in our industry, if we... Um, be, are able to create or put together trainings that are on standard industry standard levels, I think that you know we would see um, an elevation in our service excellence in the territory. Indeed, uh, very right. Now, you mentioned a little bit about uh, the bartenders and waiters and, and line staff, but mm -hmm. uh, go in detail a little bit for me as it pertains to what exactly will be covered in this training and tell me about uh, the different disciplines that will be included. Okay, so um, we have decided, like I said, this was a 10-year plan to start off in cohorts. So okay. the first cohort that we are going to be um, addressing uh, the persons who 
we're going to have certified restaurant servers, certified guest room attendants, certified front desk representative, and certified kitchen cooks okay. in our first cohort. And then we will be going on to be able to address the taxi drivers, people that are working in the spas, people that's working in the yachting industry. Uh, Ron, I really wanted to touch on the taxi drivers, though. Yes. The BVI Tourist Board and HLSCC has sat down to you know, have conversations about how can we do training for taxi drivers differently? Because, Ron, you take a look at our taxi drivers. We have some amazing taxi drivers, but Very people true. learn differently. Mm -hmm. And um, we were of the opinion that if we train, we change the way we train our taxi drivers in terms of day one, we go out on the boat, on the, in the taxi tours and see how they do it. Day two, show them how to do it. And day three, help them to practice with us and have it, you know, in conjunction to a lot of different um, areas. Because uh, truth be told, Ron, not everyone wants to sit in a classroom and hear persons facilitate information to them. They, they need to be able to actually see it in action so that they can understand why it is important for them to be able to be certified and trained in those areas. Mrs. Barnes, I absolutely love the idea of inclusion. And what the idea that I get is really, it's just not a matter of uh, restaurant persons. No. It's going to take uh, essentially a collaborative effort by all stakeholders, all persons uh, within the hospitality industry in order to make this very effective. True. From the taxi men who, who are picking our guests up at the airport uh, to the persons meeting and greeting them at the actual hotels or restaurants. So I love the idea of inclusion and I continue to wish you guys uh, the very best. Now, how can persons who are desirous of uh, participating sign up. Is there a cost a attached to us? Tell us about that. Okay, so um, with collaboration with the BVI Taurus for the yes. Government of the Virgin Islands and H. Lavity Cell Community College, um, we received $100,000 on Friday at our um, press conference and the hundred thousand dollars covers the first 1,000 persons to sign up. Um, we persons, the first 1,000 people are going to be free so, you know, obviously they won't have to pay, but anyone after 1,000, we're going to be talking with the government some more to see, you know, what we can do to be able, because we know that persons haven't been working and a lot of people are not financially stable. So we wanted to still ensure that, you know, we give back to the community to be able to make sure that people don't say, well, you know, I can't afford to be trained. Correct. We wanted to be able to put it out there. So the first 1,000 persons are going to be trained Terrific. free of cost um, in the first cohort. Um, we also will be going over to to Virgin Gorda, Just Van Dyke, Annie Gada, and Tortola. All of the trainings are going to happen there. The reason why we decided to do it that way, Ron, is because a lot of times the sister islands always have to come to the to Tortola, and I really didn't think that that was fair. So we created a way for us to be Beautiful. able to go out and meet the sister islands because um, it, the truth be told, we're all one Virgin Islands, and we have to be able, you know, to be fair to people and um, the, the, that idea brought it out to the fact that we need to go to the industry and not have the industry come to us all the time. Wonderful. Now, you mentioned about the BVI Tourist Board. Uh, mm -hmm. They have played an integral part uh, in the launch, of course, with the donation of the uh, check towards the success. But right. tell me about this partnership. There's the college, or there's the Tourist Board, and of course the government. How did this all really manifest? And talk about those three uh, essentially uh, organizations coming together and really pushing uh, this mantle. Well, you know, tourism is a lifestyle. Anyone that knows me knows that I always say that. And it's all of us. It's all of our business, tourism, right? I think that the way that we came together is, you know, as the Premier spoke at the launching, there are persons that are on different boards. So the connection in terms of looking at tourism as a whole, um, being a board member and sitting, you know, and, and, and listening to the conversations. I said to, to um, HLS 6 that this is a perfect opportunity for us to be able to get a memorandum of understanding so that HLS 6 isn't doing one thing, BVI Tourist Board isn't doing one thing, and the government isn't doing one thing. We're coming together to, to, to put that puzzle together so that we can pool our resources, so that we can always, you know, give the best of what we have to offer in the Virgin Islands. So that collaboration came out of a lot of planning, conversations, back and forth, um, the, the experts being 
in the area in terms of I am an expert in finance, I'm an expert in hospitality, I'm an expert in, you know, X, Y, and Z. We all came together. We did a memorandum of understanding, I think it was in February, where BVI Taurus Board will be working together with us at HLSTC with the trainers. We're going to start doing a train the trainer program for persons who are working within the industry that probably would want to be able to facilitate these right. trainings on the property. Now, Ron, um, I've read a lot of the blogs and people are saying that, oh, 1,000 people, there's no way we'll be able to train 1,000 people for December hmm. first. That is not the goal. The goal is for us to have the platform available consistently across the board for us to train, not today, not tomorrow, but for a long time because um, training and development follow-up is the most important component. So we are going to be building databases that will be able to say, hey, we trained this pool of people let's be able to go out and measure it let's go and do some brush up let's see you know what what we didn't get that we need to get so it's an ongoing Amazing. conversation and i really would like to 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 talk to the persons out in the industry the stakeholders run yes because i think that let's say for example the yachting industry we have a lot of persons in the yachting industry that has a wealth of knowledge that I might not necessarily have. I want to call out the Bentley Hodges, the um, Mr. Malone. Mm -hmm. I think his name is, I'm not getting in trouble here, Ron. Hey, Clarence Malone. Okay. Uh, these persons have been working in this industry. Judy Pets for um, the BVI Yacht Regatta. These persons, I am challenging you to come together. Right. Start a committee. Be able to know what the precautions or the COVID-19 standards are for your industry. It can't be that we're waiting on the government alone to do it, waiting on HLSCC to do it. I think every component in tourism needs to come together, have a committee, understand what the protocols are once they are approved by cabinet and be able to have the conversation and come either to BVI Taurus or HLSCC and say, listen, this is how we think this should happen because to be, we need to be able to include people in, in the entire training component. Even so, the persons in the spa, persons who, um, who are working in restaurants, in hotels, in villas, I think that all of these committees need to come together they're the experts within those sectors of tourism, be able to come up with a plan as to what they would like to see happen out of COVID-19 and a way forward to build persons um, in, in terms of their career in the industry. Definitely, I, and I could not agree with you more. We have a lot of talented, experienced persons uh, within the we hospitality do. and tourism industry, we and do. I do think that it's a collaborative effort. Um, so, as you said, uh, many times we look for our officials for a plan, but the experts uh, pretty much know it best, so they can also uh, lend a voice to this cause. Now, there is no doubt, Mrs. Barnes, that the global pandemic has significantly impacted tourism industries. We were talking about protocols, but from your seat, what are some areas of that businesses in the hospitality industry and professionals need to be paying more attention to specifically as we prepare to uh, reopen? I think that we need to stop, think, and then strategize. I think that when we, we, are, we know that December 1st is right around the corner. If you have a restaurant, you have a hotel, a villa, any business that's attached to tourism, you need to get inside of your business, start to write policies for your business, things that you know that your employees are supposed to be able to, to manage so that you can keep everyone safe that's coming back to the shores. Just take a look at, you know, how do we do manage social media? How do we, um, what is the difference between sanitation and disinfecting? How are we going to hold our employees accountable? What should happen if we find out that someone is sick, they have a temperature? So those types of things, policies and procedures, put in, 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 put in place those policies and procedures from now inside of your organization. You don't have to wait for the, the opening protocols. There are so many resources out there that you can use. You can go to the National Restaurant Association and be able to see what they're doing and streamline the way you want to be able to welcome your employees back into your organization. And I think that, you know, meetings and huddles and things of that nature is important. And I would like persons that even if you have a small business, 
I am more than happy, um, Ron, to open up my knowledge to those small businesses to say, this is what your job descriptions are supposed to look like. This is what your training platform should look like. When you're welcoming in your employees, this is what your orientation package should look like. And those things should all include, you know, living in the new normal and uh, ensuring that we hold um, people accountable that's working within our organization. So I think that policy creation and implementation run is is what is needed first and foremost alongside um, a, a solid HR plan for persons who are working in the industry because a lot of times people just come off of the street and they're able to get a job as a restaurant server that's something that I really hope that we would change I hope that you know if we want to be able to hire persons that we say hey can you go to the college and get a certification in the area so that we can start that conversation to know that they have the, ne the necessary skills because they were trained. So I think that those are some of the areas that, you know, persons who have businesses should be able to, you know, sit and think and come up with so that when we welcome back employees into the industry, that we have a plan for right. managing our employees and managing the pandemic. Wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing. Now, before we go, I want you to reiterate uh, how persons can get in contact with the college if they are interested. Uh, in addition to that, uh, leave us with some closing remarks as we pertain to uh, the reopening phase and, and really the training and development. Uh, professional development is of paramount importance for any organization. Um, and the idea that there will be ongoing training in the hospitality industry, not rushed, ongoing, uh, so persons get to uh, take their time with this training. I'm very happy and I'd like to congratulate you and your team. Thank uh, you. But before we go, how can persons uh, get in contact who are interested at the college um, and also give us some closing remarks? Okay, so the trainings, like I said, would be open up um, October 20th. Persons can register for the training by going to www.hlscc.edu.vg, which is our website, and you're going to be able to take a look at the links on the top that says admission. You're going to click on the admission, and then you will be able to see um, another link pop up that's geared towards the registration um, of the certification program. I want to ask persons that are registering to please ensure that you indicate which sister island you're on and which certification that you are signing up for. Um, there are some rules when it comes to the certification. Because we want to be fair to persons, we want to ensure that you understand that if you sign up for a certification in as a restaurant server, that that is the only one that you would be able to get for free. But However, you are um, welcome to come to the other trainings, but they would not be free at that time. We only have one, you only have one um, training that is free. Um, there is an exam that is associated with the certification that is done externally um, that you would be able to you know go in and take the exam however if you're not successful that's not the end of it we're going to bring you back and you can pay I think it's $25 to retake the exam again so persons are can go to the college's website or they can call 494-4994 which is the college's number and ask to be transferred to culinary and hospitality studies or the registrar's office um, as I leave, Ron, I just want to be able to tell people to be open-minded. I haven't seen yet a COVID-19 um, specialist or someone who's an expert in COVID-19. The world is still battling the pandemic. You know, um, just this morning, I learned that in the United States of America, fif approximately 50,000 new COVID-19 cases yesterday alone. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Um, the UK is planning on doing another shut shutdown, mm -hmm. um, putting some curfews in place. I want people to understand that, yes, we are opening on December 1st. That is a fact. I want people to understand that we all have a role to play. We all need to keep each other safe. We all need to ensure that we do what is necessary to build people up within the industry, to, to, to be able to guide them as to you know, where they can be certified. They can come to the college, and we are more than will, will, welcome, we are more than willing, excuse me, to be able to even put you on a tourism career um, plan to say that 
that, listen, you don't have to stay as a dishwasher. You don't have to stay as a restaurant server. There are other areas that you will be able to, you know, go on and we can get you there, you know, with some planning, like executing um, a, a, a entire platform just for you so that you could be, you know, more certified and um, become a professional within, um, in, within tourism, um, you know, I like to talk about Chef Willow Stout. Chef Willow Stout is a great example Indeed. as to where you can start and you could be whatever you want. He started as a, a dishwasher and he ended like executive chef, where now he has his own thing happening for him. You know, we have a lot of people out there that started out somewhere. Just start, you know, and the resources are there at the college. Come find out what you need to do. We would help you get to where you need to be. Um, COVID-19 isn't going anywhere. It's the new regular. We have to learn to live in it. And we all have to learn to walk together to ensure that we keep the territory safe and that we um, up or elevate our service standard skills in the country. And HLSCC, the BVI Tourist Board, and the government of the Virgin Islands is very, very, very serious about the training and development of persons in this territory. Mrs. Uh, Keisha Davis Barnes, thank you so much. She's the Director of Culinary Arts and Hospitality Studies at HLSCC. As we begin the uh, uh, gearing towards the reopening process, I think all stakeholders are not only excited, uh, but it's important again to uh, uh, have that training. And we thank you so much for taking the time out, viewers. Uh, that you. is not all for today. Uh, my colleagues, Jovan and Kyla, will be uh, uh, sitting down with you at 6 p.m. to go over the daily happenings. We have a lot going on, uh, not only in the local scene, but uh, regionally and internationally, as well as we continue uh, to look at how all of us um, across the region and internationally are grappling uh, with the pandemic that is COVID-19 in addition to a lot of local happenings. Thank you so much. Uh, enjoy the rest of your day. Happy Monday and have a beautiful week. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.